Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today I am absolutely so psyched by some recent news from Heepler Simulations in conjunction with Eagle Dynamics. If you haven't already heard, I will have the trailer pinned in the comment section down below, but today we got an announcement trailer for the F4E Phantom 2 for DCS World. I can't tell you guys how excited I am for having an F4 Phantom and specifically an F4E in DCS World. I think this is an absolutely fantastic development and is one of the best jet announcements for DCS World to date. I'm also super excited to see that this module is actually being built in conjunction between Heepler and Eagle Dynamics, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm sure you guys have already seen the trailer, and again, it is pinned in the comment section down below if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, today we're going to talk about what you can potentially expect from an F4E Phantom 2 in DCS world. Something to also mention here is the Heepler also said that they are starting with the F4E, so maybe they will branch out to other variants of the F4 down the road. I think it's a very good uh, idea to start with the F4E due to the fact that the F4E was the most numerously produced variant of the F4 as well as used by the most number of countries. So folks from as varied places from Japan to Australia to the United States to Germany even to Iran and Turkey and Israel are going to be able to want to get their hands on the DCS World F4E Phantom 2. I believe this is going to be an aircraft type that is going to pull people over from other simulators, other genres of gaming, and pull them into DCS World because the F4, like the F14, is such an iconic piece of aviation hardware and military aviation history. So, kind of getting past that, let's talk about what we can potentially expect from an F4E Phantom 2 in DCS World. So, as I'm sure many of you guys who have buried yourselves deep into the of mythology of DCS World and its developers um, know that Belsum Tech, which was a third-party developer uh, back before the release of the FA-18C Hornet, had actually set, stated that they were working on an F4E Phantom 2 quite a long time ago and even released some screenshots of the external model wearing the you know very ubiquitous and very iconic Southeast Asia camouflage, as well as some photos, both textured and non-textured, of the Rio seat slash Wizzo seat in the back, as well as the pilot seat in the front. Such an iconic cockpit in the F4. I love how the radar screen is right front and center, right underneath the gun sight. It's just you cannot mistake a F4 cockpit for anything else. But they also stated the actual variant of the F4 that they were going to be producing, or the variant of the F4E that they're going to be producing, and that is the ARN 101. So this is an upgrade package that the US United States Air Force actually bought for their Phantoms, uh, their F4Es specifically, to retrofit onto their older Phantoms as well as to have built-in standard by McDonnell Douglas going forward in their continued procurement of F4E Phantom 2s going into the early to mid 1980s. Now this upgrade package was started to be put onto F4s in 1979 through 1980 to about 1981 is kind of when they kind of put this upgrade package on all of the aircraft they're going to put it on. This came with a lot of modernizations and upgrades to the F4E that is going to put this aircraft in, if we do get the ARN 101 version that is, into a perfect spot for DCS World in my opinion. It can be easily downgraded through restrictions on weapons carriage as well as uh, you know numbers of weapons to downgrade it to a you know straight off the factory line brand new F4E Phantom 2 in 1965/66 for flying you know against uh, MiG-19, 17s and MiG-21s or to give it its full capability and bring it up to standard of a very late uh, United States Air Force F4E, as well as other export uh, countries that still fly the F4 Phantom to this day. Now, one of the things that people are going to be able to say is, oh man, the F4, it can't turn in a dogfight. It's not going to be great against all the Red 4 aircraft that we have in DCS world. 
But one of the things that's gonna mitigate that is upgraded J79 engines that of course are smokeless by the uh, era of 1979 slash 1980, as well as the addition of the pave spike targeting pod that is gonna go on the uh, left forward sparrow station on just to the uh, left hand side of the Wizzo cockpit as well to be able to guide laser guided bombs into their targets. Um, you know, if they do an F4D in the future, it'd be super cool to have like a Zot box in the uh, Wizzo cockpit to actually manually guide laser guided bombs into a target via binoculars. Well, that would be super cool. But this version of the F4 is going to have a pave tack, uh, pave tack or pave spike targeting pod on that forward left hand sparrow station to carry things like GBU-12s and GBU-10s. I do not believe the Air Force was using GBU-16s at this point. As many of you guys know, one of the major export customers of the F4E and F4D in particular was Iran, and they used LGBs to great effect off of their F4Ds against the Iraqis during the first Gulf War or the Iran-Iraq War, as you can call it. So. That is a very exciting development. It's going to be able to carry things like upgraded AIM-7Fs and upgraded versions of the Sidewinder. So you're not going to be forced to be, you know, very close range with your Sparrows or very, uh, you know, in the rear aspect with your Sidewinders. Also, something that's very cool about these later versions of USAF F4Es is it's going to have the TSO system. So what is the TSO system? It's an acronym that I can't quite remember exactly what it is. However, it is a TV camera system very similar to the TCS system that you've seen in your F-14 A and B Tomcat in DCS world already. Due to the restrictive rules of engagement for F-4 Phantom, F-8, to F-105, all the pilots over North Vietnam, uh, the United States Air Force and Navy realized that in order to VID targets, the eyeball is not good enough. They're going to need to be able to zoom in and see those enemy aircraft from as long of a range as possible to preserve that advantage that United States Air Force and Navy and Marine Corps aircraft have in the BVR arena over those Russian jets. It was pretty standard back then to have the tactic of, if you're saying flying in a four ship of F-4s, to have one of the wingmen zoom up as fast as they could and pass by those MiGs and then get out of the way and go defensive to have him be able to VID those MiGs before the other members of the flight were able to take BVR shots against those MiGs. Again, having that very restrictive ROE of needing that visual identification. So that's going to be a very cool addition, as well as there is some limited ground targeting capacity for the TSO cameras in these aircraft. They're also going to be able to be fitted with AGM-45 strikes and AGM-78 standard arms. As, so that's a very short range and a very, very long range uh, anti-radiation missiles that were developed during the Vietnam War. I do know that some F4Es were fitted with the capacity to use AGM-88 harms, not just F4G wild weasels, but I don't know if that's going to be part of the ARN-101 package that we're probably going to be seeing on the Heat Blur Eagle Dynamics F4E Phantom 2. So, also able to use weapons such as the AGM-65 Mavericks, um, you know, it's always the very infamous incident of Iranian F4Es absolutely destroying and obliterating Iraqi tank columns marching their way into uh, the Iranian desert uh, during their invasion during the uh, 1980s. So very, very cool stuff that's going to be coming on this aircraft. Um, so I'm just so excited, guys. I can't even tell you how excited I am to finally have an F4E Phantom II in DCS world. And it did come in the teaser trailer, it said 2022. So hopefully we're gonna be able to see this aircraft in 2022. I can tell you guys that I am just over the moon excited and I'm very glad that this uh, aircraft is being developed by Heatbler. Being a two seat aircraft, it's gonna need to have an AI for the back seater, very similar to the F-14 Tomcat or the attack helicopters that we're seeing released. And I believe with uh, you know, not a huge knock on Eagle Dynamics, but the AI system that Heepler developed for Jester and the F-14 is beyond superior to the Petrovich AI system that is currently implemented in uh, the Mi-24 Hein. We have yet to see 
that the um, AG, AH-64 D Apache is gonna have the same system. I believe it's probably gonna be similar if I had to guess. And I think the idea of pressing a button and then using head movements with Track IR or VR or Toby Eye Tracker is far and away superior to having actual discrete keybind commands to the AI or using a hat switch especially in an aircraft like a helicopter or the F-4 Phantom, which is an extremely hands-on type of aircraft where moving your fingers around to you know, manipulate the AI, it's just taking away your ability to fly the aircraft very, very well, whereas a quick head movement you know, allows you to be completely hands-on with your F-14 Tomcat the entire time and not having to worry about moving your fingers, moving your hands to manipulate the AI. We all know that Jester has his limitations, but uh, he works incredibly well for what it is, and I absolutely think that it's one of the greatest accomplishments of heat blur simulations when it comes to the F-14 Tomcat, and especially its ability to use, or Jester's ability to use the targeting pod and find targets on the ground. That is quite a remarkable accomplishment when it comes to actually coding the aircraft. So, you know, I hope that in the future, you know, maybe Eagle Dynamics can retroactively bring more of a head tracking, you know, eye movement or head movement kind of thing to Petrovich and to George in the AH-64, because I think it's a much more superior system to using a hat switch or keybinds. So I'm sure you guys can tell I'm over the moon. I am so excited about this development for DCS World. I think the community is absolutely going to love the F4. I think the iconic nature of the F4 Phantom is going to bring in a heck of a lot of people into DCS world, and it's going to be an incredibly challenging aircraft and an incredibly difficult aircraft to fly and fly well. It's going to really reward those people who like to specialize in the F4. And uh, if I didn't say this earlier, the F ARN 101 is an F4E with leading edge slats and dog teeth on the wing. So we can't really see that here in this screenshot too well because it's just too blurry. Uh, heat blur, of course, uh, blurred the image. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it is going to be an incredibly maneuverable version of the F4. And with those upgraded J79s, it's going to have a very much improved thrust to weight ratio and maneuverability over the older generation of F4Es and Cs and Ds and uh, the A version, of course, as well as the, uh, the B version and the J version that preceded it. So um, I'm sure that they're gonna get into navalized versions of the F4, but I think it's a great place to start with the F4E and the capabilities that the ARN 101 upgrade package brings to the table. Now, it, I will say it is not 100% confirmed that it is going to be an ARN 101, but it was confirmed back in the day that the Belsum Tech F4E was going to have the ARN 101 upgrade package. Whether they were actually specifically modeling an F4 whose serial number you know, put it as an upgraded F4 or if it rolled right off of the assembly line with that upgrade package already integrated. But like I said guys, I am over the moon. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope you definitely check out this trailer from Heat Blur and Eagle Dynamics. Again, pinned in the comment down below. We'll see you later guys. Stay safe out there, fly safe and stay healthy.